What is magnetic variation, and how do we use it when we're navigating in the aircraft? Let's look at it visually. We're on the ground at Independence State in Oregon. Looking at this airport on the map, we see that the runway is as pretty close to straight up and down as can be. What does it mean exactly when a line is straight up and down on a map? To the left of the runway is another line that's straight up and down, basically parallel the runway center line. This is a line of longitude. It's imaginary. You won't find this line in that field near the airport, but if we zoom out, we see a bunch of these vertical lines. At first, it looks like all these lines are parallel. They don't intersect. But since we know the world isn't flat but a globe, we have a feeling that as we get further out, the lines will come together. Slowly at first, it's a big planet, but eventually they curve in towards each other and all meet up in the same place. Where is this place? It's the North Pole, the true North Pole. This is the point through which the Earth spins. If we looked at the Earth from the top down, the true North Pole would appear stationary while the rest of the world spun. We base all our navigation around this specific point on the globe. All lines of longitude, any line running straight up and down on a map, eventually points directly toward the true North Pole. Because our runway center line does the same thing, if we followed it for long enough, we'd also end up at the true North Pole. Now, when we navigate, we use a compass to orient ourselves with respect to north, east, west, and south. On the ground, on the runway, we're pointing along that center line that's aiming all the way to true north. But what does our compass say? Rather than reading north, it shows us on a heading of about 3, 4, 5 degrees. It's off by 15 degrees. A big clue to that is the name of the runway itself that we're sitting on, 3, 4. That suggests the runway heading is closer to 340 degrees than dead north, 360. The difference is due to how the compass works and what's called magnetic variation. The Earth is a big magnetic field, with all the field lines flowing through a point close to, but not the same as, the true North Pole. This point is called the magnetic North Pole. It moves around slightly every year, but these days it's actually located around here. So our compass says that when we're headed north, we're actually pointed at this spot, not the true North Pole. What this means is that when we're planning a flight, we need to correct for this variation. The variation changes depending where we are on Earth. Different places will have different alignments between that true and magnetic North Pole, and other oddities in the magnetic field will throw it off as well. This map of the U.S. shows what the variation is in different parts of the country. In Oregon, we're near that line called an isogenic line, showing a variation of 15 degrees. If we want to navigate towards due magnetic north, where our compass is reading north, we have to adjust our heading from true north 15 degrees to the east. So we need to swing ourselves around to the right so that if we're pointed off to the side like this, the compass now reads due north. This is magnetic variation visualized. We're on a 15 degree angle with the runway center line. Those lines we saw are also displayed on our sectional charts. Here's us at Independence State. Just to the south, we see a dashed line with the variation for the area, 15 degrees east. How does this help us in navigation planning? Going back to the runway, if we want to know what heading will take us on a true north course, in other words, aligned with that runway center line, we need to subtract 15 from 360 to get 345, which is indeed what the compass read when we were lined up on the runway. It's very easy to confuse whether we need to add or subtract variation. So remember this, plot out a true course on the map. Here we did 360. Now for an east variation, subtract it to get the required magnetic course, 345. If it were a west variation, we'll add it. The memory aid east is least, west is best works here. East is least, we subtract it to get magnetic course. All navigation, not just compass navigation, is based on magnetic directions. If we look at the sectional, near that isogenic line, we notice a compass rose for the Corvallis VOR. VORs don't use compasses or the Earth's magnetic field at all, but they're oriented in terms of magnetic direction. The big arrow pointing at due north, zero degrees, isn't straight up and down. True north, the perfect vertical line, runs through the compass rose at about 345 degrees, the magnetic course. So VOR compass roses can be used to determine magnetic variation too. Just be careful as they're not kept up to date as frequently as these isogenic lines so they may not perfectly match up. GPS too uses magnetic directions. Here we're flying along the runway center line of independence, pointing towards true north. But our GPS track is about 345, the magnetic course. So these are a few ways you can visualize magnetic variation to make it easier to use when you're planning your navigation. 
for more training and other great flying content, head over to our website at flight-insight.com. See you there.